Yo, what's the hyphenate? And this video is about how the barracks, specifically Steve Barra, did me dirty. And the only reason I'm actually making this public and putting this out there is because Steve Barra has been going to different people in the skate industry and trying to smear my name. He's been telling people that I'm shady, that they shouldn't work with me, and pretty much try to ruin any relationships I've had or could potentially have in the skate industry, all because he did me dirty and I said I would take it to court if we didn't resolve things in a professional manner. I'm making this video because I feel I have to defend myself. People have been asking what's going on with the barracks. I was there for a couple years doing a lot of content, and now I'm not there. So this video is going to break down the entire story. Now, it's kind of a long story, but I'm going to go from the beginning, and there are going to be a bunch of cuts in this video just so that way I can keep it straight to the point. Now, before I explain everything, if anybody at the barracks, Steve Barra, or anybody that's been there the past couple years says that I'm lying, says that anything that I'm about to explain is inaccurate, well, then I have no problem putting out another video with all the receipts. I literally have physical receipts. I have video recordings, audio recordings, emails, text messages. I got all the proof that states and shows without a shadow of a doubt that what I'm going to say in this video is factual. Also, I do wanna say that there have been some really solid people at the barracks, some few good people that have not been grimy, have not tried to play games with me, and just nothing but love for them. I'm not gonna be putting names on blast. Some of you guys might be able to piece together who I'm talking about, but the main person that really was behind everything that went down with me and a lot of other grimy business I saw when I was there the main person behind all of it is Steve Barra. Again, I didn't want to put any of this on blast, but Steve Barra started running his mouth. All right, so let's start from the beginning. I pretty much saw the inception of the barracks. As a skateboarding fan, I saw when the barracks became a thing and first started blowing up. I was a huge fan instantly. In 2008, the barracks had created a social media site called My Barracks, and they had a contest. I won that contest, and I got a weekend trip to the barracks for the battle at the barracks one finals i was 19 years old i was extremely excited to be there that's when i met steve barra me and him actually interacted that weekend and we formed a bond from there he had pretty much said anytime i wanted to skate the barracks i was allowed to so i skated a good amount quite a few times after that battle at the barracks one finals i got into a car accident lost my car couldn't end up going to the barracks consistently and uh, eventually I kind of just like faded out and the employees that were at the barracks at the time that would usually be the ones that let me in when I would go skate there had all filtered out. And I always felt like Steve Barra was not somebody I should bother for this little kid to go skate. So I never hit him up personally and he didn't have social media at the time. So the only real way to get a hold of him would have been via email because I never had his number. Fast forward a couple years, I saw Barra at a couple different events and he always remembered me, which I was always really excited about. Again, he was kind of like a role model to me and I was a fan of him as a skateboarder before the barracks and then with the barracks, I became a really big fan of his and the barracks. So I had always wanted to be a part of the barracks at some level. Fast forward many years to 2020, I did this clip of me doing a free throw kickflip. So I did a kickflip out of free throw line on a basketball court and I made a shot at the same time. I ended up sending that to the barracks and to Steve Bear, who now had an Instagram. So that way, uh, because the barracks would actually share creative clips from just fans. So I ended up sending it to them just to see if they would reshare it. Well, Steve Barra saw my message. He followed me. He remembered who I was. And then we had a quick interaction. Once he followed me, I was crazy excited. I was like, oh man, like Steve Barra, he remembers me. So I sent him a message, just small talk. Hey man, how's it been? You know, just wanted to say uh, thank you again for that weekend trip in 2009. That was the Battle of the Barracks one final. So I won the contest in 2008. 2009, I actually went there for the weekend. So I just thanked him for that. And I told him that that was still one of the greatest weekends of my life and, you know, hope he's been doing well. So then from there, we just followed each other on Instagram and would interact here and there. Now, this is early 2020, pandemic starts. I'm posting up a lot of content with my podcasting, with my gaming, with my music. I have my clothing line, Doubt Me, and I'm posting up a lot of photo shoots with different models. And Barra's consistently liking and showing love to my content, which was really dope. And he would like a lot of the photos that had my Doubt Me apparel in it, mostly a bunch of like hot chicks that were modeling, but he would like them. And so I had sent him a DM and I said, hey man, like, you know, thanks for all the love. I have, uh, I'd love to give you some Doubt Me gear. Um, let me know your address and I'll mail you a package. 
gives me the address. I had been to the barracks before, so when I saw the address, I recognized that it was the barracks. So I sent him a DM. I said, hey, man, like if you're okay with that, I could just bring it to you in person. It's not far. And again, this is the start of the pandemic, actually. So freeways were empty. People weren't really driving. So I was like, oh, man, it's like only a 12-minute drive for me to go to the barracks and drop it off in person. So I sent him that DM that I would bring it in person. He didn't reply. I drove over there anyway, just thinking like, I'm going to drop off the package in the front and leave it there. Or when I get there, the gate was closed. I couldn't get in. So I sent him a DM. Hey, man, uh, I try to come bring it to you in person, but the gate's closed. I'll mail it tomorrow through the USPS, United States Postal Office. And then hours later, he sent me a DM back saying, hey, man, sorry, I just saw it. Uh, if you want, bring it to me in person tomorrow. I was like, all right, cool. Now, I'm excited to see Vera again because, again, I hadn't seen him in 11 years, and I was still a super big fan of Vera. So I go the next day, bring him the package. We just start connecting and just, like, talking. You know, how you been? How's everything? Blah, blah, blah. I've been seeing what you've been doing. And at this point, when I get to the barracks, nobody's there. It's, like, empty. And apparently, like, everyone was work-from-home orders because of the pandemic. He was pretty much there by himself. And uh, he was actually painting the inside of the barracks. I ended up building rapport with him, now catching up after all these years. And I say, hey, Mendick, if you need help, I'll help you paint. I, you know, I got a lot of free time on my hands right now. The pandemic's like got everything shut down. So he's like, yeah, if you don't mind, sure. We end up getting some food and he starts talking to me about the things that I've been doing. Again, gaming, podcasting, et cetera. And he starts saying that, man, I want to make the barracks bigger and go beyond just skateboarding. And I've been wanting to add a podcast and uh, gaming content and tech content, which I have a tech channel as well. I offer like, hey, man, if you need any help or any advice or, you know, whatever, just let me know. Like, I got all that stuff on lock. Like, I know how all that stuff works. Like, whatever I can do to help the barracks, like, I'd, I'd be more than happy to help. So the next day, I go to the barracks and I help him paint. It's just him, me, and then a female friend of his. Nobody else at the barracks. It's completely shut down. And then he starts telling me that his mind's been kind of just racing with a bunch of ideas. And long story short, he pretty much says, is there any way that I could do what I do, but at the barracks also? And instantly I'm like, hell yeah, of course. Like anything that you can imagine in those realms, like in those arenas, I can definitely do. Now at that point, I'm like ecstatic. Um, In my mind, I'm like, a little kid just so excited because I love the barracks and now to potentially be a part of the barracks and create something new is just exciting. So I was like, yeah, man, whatever, like, just let me know. Like I can do, I could do it all and I'm ready to go. Most of the days that week I go and help him continue to paint the inside of the barracks. He's trying to remodel the barracks inside and change up the look. And throughout these days that I'm helping him paint, we keep talking about maybe what we can do with the gaming and podcasting, etc. And he's, starting to tell me like, yeah, you know, like, I love what you're doing. We'll put Doubt Me everywhere. We'll get people to like know about Doubt Me and the Hyphenate. And, you know, we'll create all this stuff and we'll, we'll launch this new podcast. We'll launch this gaming content, do, potentially do a tech channel here too. All these different things. We could do that and help each other grow. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. And so I start asking like, all right, well, what do I got to do to kind of make this happen? Like, I'm ready to go. I have the skill sets and I have a lot of the equipment already. I have a, another studio in LA. So i um, like, I can bring some of that gear over here if you need. I'm pretty much just like, whatever it is to get it going, I'm down. So then we actually start having sit down meetings where we're trying to strategically plan this. And he starts not really knowing kind of where to go with it. So he starts asking me to put together like a game plan, blueprints, et cetera. We have a bunch of meetings for weeks and weeks. And most of the times that we have a meeting, this is where I start seeing like things kind of go a little bit, not what they seem to be. In the beginning, he's telling me, yeah, we'll put you everywhere. We'll get you all going. And yeah, let's do this. I'm ready to go. And every meeting that I would show up to, he would say, okay, let's meet this day at this time. I would be there. And then he would just make me wait for like three, four hours. And I'd just be just sitting there. And he would be doing other stuff on a phone call, on a computer. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll get to you right now. Or, yeah, we'll, we'll fix it. Just so many times, every single time for like weeks. It was very frustrating. But I was like, okay, you know, like, you know, I got I to gotta be patient. He's really busy. He's, you know, this big, you know, not only a skateboarder, but also a businessman. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'll be patient. Then he starts having me really come up with a game plan and I 
put together a full pitch on how everything would operate, what we would need. I did everything from uh, a, like essentially a treatment to actual blueprints. I actually sketched out what a studio would look like with the gear, et cetera. And every time that I would give him that, he'd be like, all right, well, let's meet this you know, next week or in a few days. And every time, keep me waiting for hours and then ask me, okay, so what do you think we should do? And I'm like, well, I, I emailed you. He's like, oh, I haven't looked at it. I'll look at it in a bit. Okay, make me wait again. And then ask me the same questions that he already had asked me before. This started happening a lot. And I had everything fully structured for him. And then it started being this thing where it started being a month, another month. And I'm starting to get frustrated because I have everything ready to go. Now, in this time period as well, he has started to kind of like, he wasn't driving at the time. So he would like ask me for rides to, to places. And I'm like, all right, no problem. Cause I'm thinking like, okay, well, well, at least we'll be able to talk business throughout. So he started then opening up about how the barracks had no money, that the barracks was broke. And then eventually he told me that it was hype beast who at the time owned 51% of the barracks and they were driving the barracks into the ground. And from everything he said, it sounded like that was factual. And he was like, yeah, you know, we don't have any money because uh, Hype Beast is bleeding us dry and they make it hard for us to actually be able to allocate money. He's like, we want to do all this, but we don't really have the funds. I personally already have my own business. I have various, you know, revenue streams. So I'm like, hey, man, like, don't worry about the money. Like, I'll help you out. I got a bunch of the gear already. Like, we can help each other out. And then, you know, we can launch this thing and I can get paid on the back end. Like, we can make profit together later. I don't really need the money right now. I'm down to just kind of build this with you. And his big pitch to me was, we don't have money right now, but we do have exposure. I hope get Doubt Me and the Hyphenate everywhere. We'll put you and a uh, part of the ecosystem and, and, you know, kind of grow you into our audience and we'll get you out there. And to me, that was music to my ears because I'm like, I didn't have a big following. I didn't have m much social media presence, but I had all these skill sets and, and this, this hustle and this ambition that I'm like, okay, no worries. If like you can get me in front of all these numbers, then I know how to, you know, create content that would create me revenue from, you know, music to, you know, merch, et cetera. Like the exposure itself could help me out tremendously. I don't really need the money right now. So I said, all right, look, don't worry about it. I'll help you. A bunch more meetings and they all pretty much went nowhere. I did everything he'd asked me to do every time. Business plan, sketch this, sketch that. All right, what's the format of the show? What's this, that? Two months had passed and nothing was moving. Now, at this point, I start seeing kind of some shady stuff going down. I don't see too much of it, but I see things that kind of seem questionable. There are a lot of these hungry people that kept getting brought in by Barra and he would have them do like a bunch of tasks and he would hype them up about, yeah, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And hey, man, like, you ready to be a part of the barracks? He like hyped them up to be a part of the barracks, essentially got these interns without even saying that term, got them to do a bunch of work for him. And then I started to see them all filter out. Like as soon as they were done with whatever they were doing, they were gone which is kind of odd to me. But I was doing my own thing, so I didn't really pay too close attention. But I started to kind of notice. Because I saw that, and Barra never had any conversations with me in a professional way about business. Like, I have been doing business for many years, even prior to that. So, you know, I'm always about contracts, about having everything on paper in regards to the process, to pay, to responsibilities, etc. So, because Barra never had any of that with me. And I kept seeing him do a lot of handshake deals with people and then see them like not be around anymore. I started thinking like, hmm, just in case, let me kind of talk to somebody else at the barracks who kind of does the numbers and get myself some type of concrete plan financially. So by this point, I've already had kind of met the general manager and he was actually a really cool dude. He was always very helpful. When I started kind of telling him like, hey man, like I keep being left like hanging on these meetings or hey, like, I, I thought we're supposed to go and it's not, you know, going anywhere. He would kind of like, oh, okay, you know what? I'll put you in contact with this person. So he started, this, the general manager of the barracks started connecting me with other people in the barracks who had no idea about me. So all these two and a half months that Barra's positioning this whole new game plan with me, 
never introduced me to anybody at the barracks besides the general manager who just happened to be there one time when when I came for one of the meetings, but never introduced me to anybody else. The general manager introduced me to everybody. At this point, we had solidified concrete ideas for barracks gaming and barracks podcast. Everything was clear and ready to go. I tell him, look, man, just give me the green light. Once I have the green light, like I will deliver everything. You don't even have to, you don't even have to do anything. You don't have to spend any money. You don't have to do anything. I will handle every aspect of it from the filming to the editing, to the studio build, everything. He says, all right, go for it, man. Bear gives me the green light, says, all right, go ahead, run with it. Do what you got to do. I clarify that with the general manager. He knows we're on the same page. And then I go to the general manager and I ask him, hey, man, like, Barra hasn't talked to me about money or how our business transaction is going to operate, but I want to know, like, are we going to be able to have something concrete to make sure that when it does launch and it starts generating revenue, I'm a part of that. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll make sure. Okay, cool. Now at this point, I'm going to bring a bunch of my gear from my other studio to come create this content for the barracks. Now it's a drag because I use that gear at my studio so to have it in my studio take it to the barracks and then take it back to my other studio to do content when i'm not at the barracks like it was going to be a mission so i had some money saved and i had the idea i was like all right look i can just go and buy a bunch of gear and on my dime my money go buy a bunch of gear that we need for the barrack studio so i don't have to rearrange or take anything out of my current studio so i go to the general manager and the bookkeeper both amazing people and helpful i said hey look I have this studio and I, I've i been told that there's no money to allocate towards these new avenues, this podcast, this gaming, et cetera. If I spend money out of my pocket to buy equipment for the barracks, can we make sure that I first get paid back for any of my expenses before the barracks starts making money off the content? So for example, the shows launch, we get sponsors, we get ad revenue, et cetera. Whatever the total amount for my expenses are, that gets paid back to me first. And then after that, we can split the profits from that content. The general manager says, yeah, no problem. We got you. Don't worry about it. Done deal. So I said, all right, cool. I'm going to bring you guys receipts for every expense. So you guys know, you know, everything that I'm going to spend, everything I'm going to get for the studio, et cetera. So Barrow ends up giving me this studio space in the barracks to create the gaming and podcast studio. But again, from there, he just gave me the green light and said, go ahead, do what you got to do. I go and I spend all my savings at the time, which is like, I'm not even exaggerating. And I still have every single receipt. And the general manager has copies of these receipts. The bookkeeper has copies of these receipts. And I still have a whole folder of every single expense. I spent over 10 grand out of my personal money, pretty much all my savings to invest into this studio and make it a top of the line gaming and podcast studio. I pay my friends to help me clean the studio paint the studio, and build everything. This took me a few weeks to do. I pretty much put everything else that I was doing to the side. My businesses, um, my content, all these things that I was creating, I put it to the side and then I did whatever I needed to get done, any deadlines, et cetera. But for the most part, I pretty much put my stuff on pause and I went all in for this new content that me and the barracks were going to partner up on. When I first met with Barra in person, when I went to bring him that gear and then we talked about potentially having the barracks start doing this new content. That was in May, July. I'm building out the studio. I'm there almost every day till late at night. Literally every aspect of that studio, every wire, every extension cable, all the programming, all the configuration. I'm literally doing all that with a good friend of mine, Amari, by the way, who has helped me with so much stuff there as well. He saw a lot of the stuff that is in this story. Me and Barra had been solidified and I still have all the documents that I created, all the pitches, the game plans, etc. where we had a schedule for podcasts and gaming. We were going to have three gaming videos a week and two podcast videos per week. So five pieces of content per week releasing through the barracks platforms. Right in the beginning of that process, I asked Barra, hey man, I think I can get some extra gear that we might need from some brands because me having a tech channel on YouTube, I already had built a bunch of relationships with big brands for gear, equipment, et cetera. So I I said, hey, man, like I can get some partnerships and they can send us some gear if we give them content in return. And I already know what kind of content they're going to like. Let me do 
a building the ultimate gaming and podcast studio video that gets put out on the barracks platforms facebook and youtube and instagram i had said i'm going to pitch them for the studio build video and for the two podcasts and three gaming videos per week he's like all right let's do it let's do it so not only did he say okay to a studio build video but there's also a schedule we had for five pieces of content per week that I was going to promise to these brands. At this point, he's been yes to like, let's make this happen. Whatever, if I can get everything covered without the barracks spending any money, he was down for it. I spent 10 grand out of my pocket to build a studio with furniture, equipment, gear, et cetera. And then I got these other brands, Rode, Elgato, and RLX to partner with me and also send us another 10 grand of equipment from them three in total. So, I ended up building approximately a $20,000 studio without the barracks spending a penny. The brand Elgato actually at one point had asked, is there a way prior to when these shows start releasing, can the barracks do a post about us to mention that we are going to be partnering with you guys? So Elgato had asked for one post on Instagram of their products. So I go and ask Barra and he says, of course, if they're sending us free gear, we could do a post. It's no problem. We do like 10 posts a day at minimum. One post for them is no problem. I said, all right, awesome. Once I got the gear from Elgato, I took a photo in the barracks of the Elgato gear. And then I sent it to the social media guy and I said, hey, man, Barra said that we could post this up. Can you just put something in the caption along the lines of something is coming soon? The post goes up. Half an hour or so goes by. Barra hits me up and says, hey, man, who approved this post for Elgato? And I said, well, you did. Like, you, I asked you and you said it's all good. And he starts saying, no, I didn't. You have to run that by me. That doesn't look like our standard, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, and I was like, oh, I did run it by you. He's like, no, no, no. I need to see the post before they go up. I'm like, oh, okay, my bad. I didn't know. Sorry. He makes us take it down. And then we never ended up doing a new post again, even though we were supposed to. But at that point, I'm like, okay, well, now I see, like, I have to get every approval for him, even though I thought, like, he had already approved. All right, whatever. No big deal. Now, in mid-August, when the studio's almost being done built, me and Bear have a couple quick meetings, because he's always on the go and always busy, in and out of town, and we have a couple meetings to solidify when we're going to release this content. And so I pitched him the idea of, like, hey, man, on September 4th, which was coming up in 2020... Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Remastered is coming out. That would be the perfect day for us to launch our first episode of Barracks Gaming. Let's build up to that. So then he's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Who do you want to get as guests? And I tell him, like, man, like it'd be great to have Tony Hawk or some other big guest who's, been, who's in the game. He's like, okay, yeah. Days, 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 weeks start going by. We're getting towards the end of August now. He keeps saying that he's going to get guests for these shows. And I tell all the brands that we're going to launch on September 4th and then the following week, we're going to start having our five pieces of content per week. They're excited. They're happy. Studio build is done. I film a whole video and edit it. I made sure that I didn't bother anybody on the barracks team because I didn't want them to go out of their way. This was kind of my baby with the barracks. And so I had said that I wouldn't make anything complicated for the barracks. I would give them all the content, deliver everything that's needed to be done. And then we could break bread together. We can split profits later. I do this whole video edit send it to Barra so he can approve it for the studio build video that breaks down, you know, how we built the studio, what gear we're using, including the brands that, you know, partnered with us. And then also too, we would announce that the podcast and the gaming is coming. Now, as we're getting close to that date, even though Barra had said, okay, hasn't got me a guest for the show and also hasn't approved the content that was already edited and shot. He keeps saying, oh, I, I got to approve it. I got to look at it. I'm like, well, I sent it to you already. And it's like now weeks of him having some of this content. And, well, I got to see it. I got to see it. I'm like, well, I sent it to you. Let's send it to me again. Send I literally sent it to him like three times. Like it started getting frustrating again because I'm like, man, like I'm doing all this work. I put everything to the side. I've been grinding for months to get this thing going. And now we're ready to go. And we're just like oh, two weeks away from like, or less than two weeks away now to actually our release. No guest. And so I'm starting to see this pattern that he's doing not only with me, but with a bunch of other people that I keep seeing come in because now I'm at the barracks often. I'm seeing a lot of stuff go down. I'm seeing a, a lot of like these promises from Barra to people and then he would leave them hanging or wouldn't show up or, you know, people would just kind of be just, you know, waiting on him and, and then 
he would be jumping around from one idea to another to another company and then this and he's like start making this company and start making that company i start seeing this pattern of like oh man there's no consistency or structure so i start getting a little nervous because i'm like man i just spent all my savings like is this even going to happen so i start talking more and more to the general manager who again super awesome dude super helpful and he starts kind of like sharing with me like hey man this is kind of how stuff is here at the barracks and i'm like damn well like i'm ready to go like i gotta make sure that you know we have obligations to these brands like what's what's you know what are we gonna do so he says like hey man like i'll give you a contact list of all the skaters that i have in my contact list you go and contact them he's like i can't i don't have the time i'm really busy here i don't have the time to actually end up connecting you but just cold call them or text them and just let them know that I sent you and you try to build those relationships and book them on the shows. I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you, man. Like just, if you can just give me that list. Perfect. Gives me the list. I, I literally, I don't even, I have never met uh, at this point. I hadn't met Paul Rodriguez or, um, Tony Hawk or any of these guys that like were, I'm a huge fan of Jamie Thomas. I text them. I'm like, Hey, like, you know, I got your number from the general manager's name and uh you know i'm here with the barracks we're about to launch this new show etc cetera, etc cetera. i reach out to some of these people and i tell barra later when i see him that that day letting him know because i wasn't trying to like do anything like kind of behind his background thing i was being very transparent so i said hey barra just so you know you know the general manager gave me this contact list i already contacted people so we can get people on the show and then barra's like oh no you can't do that you can't contact them i have to do that no 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 like don't contact anybody. Let me contact them. Tell me who you want. By this point, I already had to give him, him the list of the skaters I wanted on the shows twice. He's like, no, send me the list. I was like, well, I, was like well, I already sent it to you. He's like, send it again. But you don't contact anybody. I was like, all right, my bad. I didn't know. Okay, whatever. I start getting extremely frustrated and like even more nervous now because we're like a week away. No guest. Barra hadn't approved any of the content that I already had shot and edited. We had done no promo to build up to all this that was about to release, this podcast and gaming, all this stuff that's supposed to release literally in a week. Now, another thing I wanted to add is at this point, at this time frame, late August, early September, the Barracks was doing a huge, huge push for the skater Scapegoat. So Scapegoat was all over the Barracks. And so I had mentioned weeks before hey, if we can't get a big guest from the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater game, we should get Scapegoat because he's kind of like the face of the barracks right now. It's a smart play to have him be a part of the live stream. Now we're days away and I keep just trying to get a meeting with Barrett, trying to get a meeting with him. After all this hard work I've done, I can't even get five minutes of his time. He's in and out of the barracks and when he's there, he does. he's on the phone, locked up in a room and then he bounces. So I'm like, what the hell? I start sending him text messages, emails, like, hey, just like, you know, wanted to make sure, you know, everything's good, blah, blah, blah. Literally the day before we're supposed to go live, even though we're supposed to already have been promoting this and getting this all going, there's already supposed to be a studio build video out that was promised to the brands. This is now September 3rd, which I believe was a Thursday in 2020. The day before the game comes out, we had planned a live stream with a guest who Bear still hadn't got me a guest, for us to do a live stream of playing the new Tony Hawk's Remastered. We have the game ready for the day of, for the live stream, like we're good to go. I like was literally all day, all night in the studio, making sure I had everything mastered on the whole live streaming process and all the gear, all the equipment. It's already the late afternoon. I tell Barra, hey man, we're supposed to go live tomorrow. Nothing's been promoted. Nothing. He's like, hey, well, I need to see the studio build video. I'm like, okay, well, I sent it to you. Send it again. He's like, I'm leaving right now to Chicago. I'll email you from the plane. And I'm like, I'm like biting my tongue. I'm f pissed off because I'm like, this is not going to happen. And now I just lost all my money and now I'm screwed. He emails me from the plane, asks me for like the thousandth time, what is the game plan for everything? I tell him again for the thousandth time. Obviously, I'm exaggerating, but I'm not kidding. It was over a dozen times that we've had these discussions. I remind him of all the things we got to do, including the studio build video that needs to go up. Studio build video that needs to go up. He starts asking me more questions about the actual live stream and the shows. And then we have about three or four back and forth emails while he's on the plane. And then I tell him the game plan again. And he says, okay, let's do it. I'm relieved. I'm excited, but relieved because I was like, damn, I almost thought this wasn't going to happen. I sent him an email back. Thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. I'm going to tell the team to make the studio build video go live, which had already been uploaded and saved as a draft on YouTube. I'm going to tell them to make it go live and then we'll have our live stream tomorrow and we'll start blasting everything. 
I sent him that and I'm very clear about the email to make sure that he knows that I'm about to make the video go live. I wake up early, get ready for this live stream that still hadn't been announced because he had said, okay, let's do it. But this was like really late at night and the studio build video went up like at 9 p.m. All the barracks employees were off. There was nobody to do any promo for the live stream that was going to come out the next day. And so the morning comes, he calls me, still hadn't got me the guest, didn't follow through with any of the things he said he was going to do. And I'm trying to keep my calm, my composure, because I'm like, this is about to be one of the biggest opportunities of my life. I don't want him to get pissed off and then like it go to hell. So I'm like, all right, let's just see what happens. I had like a plan B. I had reached out to Garrett Jenner and I had hit him up now that I had started to build a friendship with him. And I said, hey man, like, would you be willing to be uh, you know, on the gaming show, I'm not sure if we're going to have a guest or not, but if we're not, like, would you be willing to? He said, yeah, all day. So at bare minimum, I had a backup plan, which was from my efforts. He says, hey, man, so uh, you ready for today? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Really, I'm not. I'm freaking out because I'm like, I'm hours away. I'm like, at this point, like two and a half hours away from going live on a live stream that had never been promoted. And everything was just like chaotic. Then Bear asked me, who's going to be the guest? So now I tell him like, look, like, I think Scapegoat would be a good option, but I have Garrett Jenner ready. Barra says, okay, let me call Scapegoat and see if he can do it. Calls me back, says, yeah, Scapegoat can do it. He'll be there like 30 minutes before the live stream. At this point, I'm like, damn, does he even know how to play the game? Like, you know, is, we, we had no preparation, no promo. And then Barra tells me, so we're going live, but what are you going to do about the promotion? Nobody even knows about this. What are you doing about it? Again, internally, I'm furious because I'm like, Bro, like you you haven't let me do anything you won't let me do anything without your approval and every time i try to get a hold of you you leave me hanging what do you mean what am i gonna do about the promo that's my mindset that's what i'm thinking and i just say oh well you know i can get in contact with the team right now with the barracks or the graphic designers or whatever like just tell me what i can do he's like well you know you gotta talk to this person this person do this and this and that. like now we're at an hour and a half away from the li live stream show i'm running around like a chicken with its head cut off just trying to like figure out how to make this thing go smooth I'm on my way to the barracks. We're about an hour away from the live stream. Barrett calls me again. He says, hey, man, what's up with this video that people keep telling me about? This video on our YouTube channel. And I'm like, huh? He's like, yeah, there's this video that everyone keeps telling me about that they don't know where it came from or what it's about. And I'm like, the studio build video that went up last night? He's like, is that what that was? He's like, who approved that? I'm like, you did. He's like, I didn't approve it. And then... Barra flips out. He starts cussing at me, going crazy. I'm going to say what he said. I didn't approve shit. Who the fuck approved that? I didn't approve no damn fucking studio video. No, I said okay to the live stream. I didn't approve that shit. Now nah, you got to run shit by me. He's going off on me, going off on me. Now, I'm a grown-ass man. I don't really let people talk to me like that. But again, this is a huge opportunity. I'm just biting my tongue. And I'm like f pissed off hearing this dude yell at me, cuss at me like that for something that I was very clear about in the emails. I'm like, I, I don't understand. I don't know. I sent you an email. You said it's all good. He's like, ah, I said all good to the live stream. And I was like, no, you approved the studio build video. He's like, where? Show me, show me, show me the fucking email. I forward him the email and I circled where he said, okay, let's do it. He calls me back. And he's like, no. He's like, I wasn't talking about that. No, you misunderstood. And then I completely like, I suppressed my ego, my even just, not even ego, just what I thought was being fair. I even, I was like, nah, I ate it all up. I said, that's my bad. I'm sorry. I, I fucked up, even though I know I didn't. And I say, I'm sorry. He keeps going off. And so I just say, you know, I was like, honestly, man, like we haven't had any promo. No one even knows this is happening. We don't even have to do this. No, we're going to do it. I'm on the phone with him on speakerphone while I walk into the barracks and he hangs up. The general manager sees me and he sees my face and he's like, is everything okay? And I literally just did this. And he just like, he knew, he knew this is something that happens. He had already kind of given me hints about a lot of business not being done properly at the barracks and a lot of things kind of being left hanging and they didn't say a lot, but he said enough that I picked up on that. I was like, okay, it's another day at the barracks. I start quickly realizing a lot of the unprofessionalism there. I go, I do the live stream. We kill it. The live stream is flawless. We did everything properly. Everything was on time. Everything looked good. Everything sounded good. 
It was dope. I had Skategoat and Gary Jenner on there. I finish it. After that, I'm furious. I'm upset. I'm disappointed. Just like every negative emotion because I'm like, man, I worked my ass off and like this whole process got shat on. It got like suppressed and kicked to the curb. I end up talking to the general manager and I start venting about it. I'm like, look, man, I don't understand. Like I've done everything. I've gone above and beyond. I've delivered every aspect and I've always, any little deadline I said that I would do, I've delivered on. I showed him the emails to see if I was tripping and it was, he agreed. He was like, no, you're not tripping. Like the emails very clearly, but just Barra doesn't see things. He just hears what he wants to hear, only thinks about what he wants to think about. And then that's it. So Barra, for whatever reason, I don't know what he thought, even though we've had this whole game plan, blueprints, emails, uh, game plans, formats, all these things that I've sent him throughout the months, none of it happened. I was furious. I drive home. I see that the Barracks YouTube had t and Facebook had taken down the Studio Build video, which was heartbreaking because I had just announced on my personal platforms, like I was so excited about this new venture. And then Barra texts me that we're going to meet next week and figure it out and get things done properly. Barra damn near ghosted me for weeks, weeks. And I would email him, text him, hey man, like, you know, are we going to figure this out, figure this out? At this point, we're already supposed to be delivering two podcasts, three gaming videos per week. These brands that sent us 10 grand worth of gear had already committed to working with us and that was an agreement. I had contracts with them. On top of that, I had spent all my savings and I was ready to kind of get going with this thing. And now it was just all sitting in the studio. He keeps saying, oh yeah, we got to figure it out. We got to really structure this properly and make sure it gets rolled out properly, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting pissed off. I'm like, what the hell's going to happen? Like, I don't get it. So I would email him. All right, let's meet next week. And then you'd be, something came up. Let's meet next week. And every time I was thinking like, okay, like maybe we just got to let this go. I would send him an email and I'd say, hey man, like, I don't know what's going on. These brands are waiting for this content because they would contact me like, hey, where is this at? So I was able to use that to be like, hey man, like these brands who send us stuff, like they're waiting for the content. Are we going to do this or not? Because they're starting to get upset. And I'm the one who has to email back and forth with them to be like, oh yeah, yeah we're recalibrating or we're going to make it even better than we had originally said. I'm making up a bunch of BS of these brands to kind of keep them at bay. And I'm starting to tell him like, hey man, like they're getting upset with me. Like he's like, no, no, just tell them, you know, next month, next month, next month. No exaggeration. He did that to me about four times from September through the end of November. And I had said in November, hey man, if we don't end up having this thing go, you know, soon, I'm just going to have to leave. The brands are going to want their stuff back. I'm going to reach out to them, see if they want to partner with me on my tech channel. I can't wait anymore. Like, I don't understand what we're doing. Finally, he sets up a meeting with me. We had at the time at his girlfriend's house. I go over there. He's busy. We don't end up actually having the actual meeting until like two hours later. And by this point, I had shot pilots. I had shot multiple episodes of gaming and the podcasting to show him like, hey, man, look how good this is. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, that looks good. Blah, blah, blah. He's like, all right, what we really need to do is, you know, last time it didn't really work out well. We don't even know if it didn't work out well. That's just what he said. We don't, like, it could have worked out well, but he deleted everything right off, right after, you know, we released it. And then now months had gone by and there was nothing. So right here, he's saying that it didn't work out. And he's saying, you know what? We need to really have like a game plan to roll this out. We have to get the audience to be, you know, familiar with who you are. We should maybe kind of explain something about you winning that contest and being a part of Battle of the Barracks Finals 1 and, you know, all this stuff about you and skateboarding and, you know, what you do. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. All these things that for months he had been saying, like, get me exposure, put down me on the map, put the hyphen on the map and kind of get me incorporated, which hadn't got done up to this point. Now, this is already almost half a year later. None of it had got done. He's saying like, all right, let's do that. I said, all right, cool. What do you need me to do? Every time we had a meeting, I said, what do you need me to do? I'll do it. All right, well, let's have a meeting next week to solidify all the game plan. I go and I shoot my own content. The Barracks has this series called Who Is, whatever the person's name is, they do a piece on them, almost like a documentary style. So I, I said, okay, you know what? I have this content that I can create. I went and I shot my own documentary for the Barracks so I can give it to them so that way I didn't have to wait on everybody because by this point, every, nothing would happen unless I would do it. Also, the general manager had seen me make a beat making video out of the sounds from a Tesla. And he's like, oh, that'd be cool to do here. And I said, yeah, man, I've always wanted to do that from a skate beat. I've had that idea since like 2008. I would love to do that. 
And uh, he's like, yeah, man, like, you know, let me know what day you want to film and I'll close down the barracks for you for a few hours so you can film it. I'm like, oh, it'd be amazing. That could be like the first piece of content that ends up being a part of me being introduced to the barracks audience. He's like, yeah, that sounds great. Again, the general manager had been extremely helpful. I create three pieces of content for the barracks to introduce me to the audience and to promote the content. Waiting on Barra. Now we're in December. Nothing. Nothing happens again. I'm fed up. I say, Barra, if we don't launch by this date, I gave them a date in December, the, the brands are going to pull their gear back or I'm going to try to work out a deal with them for my tech channel, but I'm leaving. He says, no, 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 no. Let, let, let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. He didn't want me to leave, even though he was clearly not being supportive. Now, throughout these months, that studio is built and is fully operational, but because it was all my gear and I hadn't got any money back for it, all the gear that I spent, the 10 grand plus the other brand gear, I had made sure to talk to the general manager and the bookkeeper about making sure that nobody else used that studio because I invested a bunch of money and I wanted to make sure that no one messed up any of the gear in there. So I only a few of us had the key. No barracks employees went in there. That was my studio. That studio was literally just locked all the time. I wasn't even using it because I had another studio and so I didn't even need to be in there. Bear leaves me hanging again. So I give one final notice. I send a full long email to Barra. Again, I have all these emails. And I tell him, look, man, I feel like I've been taken advantage of. I've put all this work into this whole process, creating these shows. We already have episodes ready to go. You know, I've done everything and more that I said I would do. And I just, I feel like, you know, you guys just took advantage and, and now you don't care. I'm going to leave. I'm leaving you know, whatever the date was, like early January. On that day, I'm taking everything out. And also, I did work out a deal with the brands, all three, Elgato, Road, and RLX. I was going to create content for them on my tech channel, and they were going to let me keep the gear instead of us sending it back. So now, and by that point, actually, I already had made the videos for them, actually. So I actually had made the videos. Technically, that gear was now mine. They had given me permission to keep it. And so that $20,000 studio... I paid for 10 grand of that studio and the other 10 grand worth of gear I already now owned by permission of the brands that sent the gear. So I said, I'm taking everything and I'm leaving. He says, okay, go ahead and go with the gaming and we'll figure out the podcast later. At that point, I'm still pissed off because I'm like, damn, what the hell, bro? Like, I can't do the podcast that I put all this time into. And, but I was like, you know what? Sure. Okay, cool. At least finally, my foot's in the door and now I can finally start launching the gaming. Now, during all these months that the studio was locked up and not even being used, because I spent all that money and that was all my gear, I had, in plain sight, put a ring cam, a video camera security system that would record and everything, audio and video, so if anybody ever went into the studio, I can see if anybody messed with my gear. Every time Barra had any of his famous friends or high profile friends or associates, he would go and parade that. And I have the video recordings. He would go in there and talk about all the stuff we're going to do with gaming and podcasting, show the room. And it was a well-built studio. It was, you know, pretty, pretty top notch. And everybody he showed it to was always blown away. Always show it off. Never once mentioned me. Never once mentioned doubt me, the hyphenate, nothing. One of the times he had some people in there and they asked, who built this studio? Now, everyone knows me as the hyphenate. My real name is Joey. Barra on occasion would call me Joe, even though most people call me hyph. Again, I have this video recording where these people ask him, who built the studio? He, in a very demeaning way, says, oh, this guy, Joe. And they're like, oh, Joe Rogan? He's like, no, this guy, Joe. He's always trying to inject himself into everything. Every aspect of that studio, every cable, Every light switch plate, outlet plate, shelves, furniture, everything was mine. I paid for barracks posters to be made in there. I also had put a Doubt Me poster in there, being that this was supposed to be a big partnership and they were supposed to help me get exposure for Doubt Me, which they never did. He ends up pointing to that in, right after saying, this guy, Joe, he's always trying to inject himself into everything. He's like, yeah, I let him put this poster up. I'm like, bro, what? After all that I've done, like, that's how you're going to talk about me and all my effort? I was heartbroken. By this point, I had like opened up to a few people at the barracks like, hey, man, like why? I don't understand. Like I've done everything. I've followed through. I'm a man of my word of a great work ethic. Like what's going on? And from a lot of people, they've said, 
Barra likes being the star. If he's not the star, he doesn't support it, he doesn't like it, or he doesn't really care about the person if they're taking shine away from him. I, then I really started to see that. Another thing that happened around that time period, Barra was always in and out of town. There's this one week period where he was in town and he started skating at the barracks, which he very rarely would ever skate. Now in the barracks, nobody ever really does any graffiti or put stickers across the barracks. Like everyone's very respectful of the space, except for these two green metal benches. These two green metal benches have a bunch of stickers and some tagging on it, but mostly stickers. I had put a Doubt Me sticker on there because there were a bunch of other stickers and they weren't taken off. They weren't ripped off or anything like that. That week that Barra was skating there consistently, I went one of the days and Barra had like just left. I go to skate that green bench and I notice the only sticker that's ripped off was the Doubt Me sticker. Now that I don't have proof of to say I have footage or, you know, anything to see that that was him, but I hadn't, I didn't have any issues with anybody else at the barracks. I, I can say with complete confidence, I know that bear ripped off my sticker, but anyway, I'm starting to kind of get off course here. Now we're in 2021, early 2021. The general manager is aware that I got the green light to do the barracks gaming. We go over a schedule. I have a bunch of episodes I've already filmed that I've had for months. And still I had nothing on paper with any type of agreement or any money that was going to be exchanged, how we were going to split profits, et cetera. I had nothing on the business side, like fully executed. It was all just kind of like, like well, whatever we said and we understood of each other. So I pushed the general manager to get me in contact with the people at Hypebeast who are technically at the time Barra's bosses because they own 51%. And they're the ones who handle all the business and contracts. I said, hey, I need to get in contact with them because I need to make sure that there's a contract for me and what I'm about to do. And so the general manager puts me in contact with them. I end up t telling them all the chaos that went down. And there's a guy who was very helpful who worked on behalf of Hype Beast that oversaw the barracks. And he felt really bad for me. And they worked out a deal with me that was very fair to me even though it wasn't a deal that they would normally do with people, they said. But knowing how bad I had been getting pretty much screwed over at the barracks for all these months. Now, keep in mind, again, this is May when I first started meeting with Barra. July, Barra gives me the green light. And then now we're in January, February of 2021. They end up hooking me up and giving me the contract deal. And I specifically say, like, I want to be an independent contractor, not a barracks employee. Because by this point, I had seen, I had started to see Barrett do a lot of other people dirty. And I was like, damn, like, he just uses people and then discards them when he's done with them. And so if I have this contract as an independent contractor um, with Hypebeast above, then at least, you know, I can deliver and I don't have to worry about him trying to screw me over because now I have this, you know, in contract, the clear cut game plan. So that was, that was the move. It was great. We started moving. I'm doing the Barracks Gaming, still waiting on Barracks Podcast. And I kept asking about Barracks Podcast. Yeah, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. I'm still pissed off about that. The brands got upset that, you know, that stuff wasn't happening. But again, I worked out my deal with them with my tech channel. I'm dropping Barracks Gaming, starting to build more of, uh, you know, more relationships with people in the skate industry. Some of the Barracks audience is starting to get familiar with me. My pieces of content to introduce me drop, the Barracks Gaming drops. And that's all moving pretty smoothly. I'm still trying to push for the Barracks podcast. Eventually, they give me a concrete no, it's not happening. And I'm like really upset about that because I'm like, man, like one, I've been podcasting myself for a while and you clearly saw these episodes, which are really good. But what they said was my name wasn't big enough to be on the podcast. And I said, well, it's not really about me. It's about the guests. Like people from the Barracks audience are going to want to watch their favorite skaters talk about their lives and their skating. It's not about me. I'm just the host. And no. And again, clearly it was Barra not wanting to share any of the shine. For those of you guys who are familiar with the Barracks in the early years, the Barracks was super popular. They had a lot of personalities. They had a lot of people, um, Retta, um, Donovan Strain, you know, they had these different people that had personalities that were able to help carry the Barracks. For the past quite a few years, uh, the Barracks hasn't had that. And it's really because Barra doesn't want to let anybody kind of shine. So this is where I started to see a lot of these things come out. So I started kind of just keeping a distance from Bear whenever he would be in town. I just did what I had to do and I would bounce. I would, 
I was already kind of like disappointed in, in how things went. Now, another thing that happened is right in the beginning of the Barracks Gaming kind of being released, I've always worn my Doubt Me hoodies, my Doubt Me hats. That's always been my signature. In the Barracks Gaming, I'm a tiny little square, a tiny little like piece on the side where you barely see my face. Small real estate on the gaming episodes. And all you could see is the Doubt Me on my hat and you can barely see it because it was so small. Barra didn't like that I was rocking my Doubt Me hats, even though he had, from the beginning, said he would help promote Doubt Me and the Hyphenate. He ends up telling uh, someone at the barracks to tell me that he doesn't want me wearing Doubt Me gear anymore. I should be wearing barrack stuff. At this point, I'm already frustrated. I'm like, look, man, I'm not doing that. I'm rocking whatever I want to rock. Like at this point, I've already spent all this money. I put all this into this. That whole studio is mine. I'm creating all the content. I'm doing all the graphic design for my content. Like I'm not bothering anybody at the barracks to do anything for me. I'm literally doing it all and just bringing it to them. And the barracks wasn't even paying me. My deal that I ended up doing with the barracks was any money that the content generated, we would split 50%. So the barracks didn't even have to pay me hourly or salary or anything. The barracks didn't have to spend a dollar on me if I help make money off the content I created, then me and the barracks will split that 50%. But the barracks didn't have to spend a dollar on anything I did for all those months. Now, towards the end of the year of 2021, the barracks gaming had been doing pretty decent. And I was trying to show the barracks that I had a lot more value. Like I wanted to be more involved with the barracks and do a lot more like dope stuff. Me being a filmmaker, a music producer, an audio engineer, I, I pitched them an idea about doing um, a short film of Michael Myers skateboarding at the barracks. I had remixed the Halloween theme song, made a hip hop version, and I had an official license from the actual uh, creators of the song to have my remix out. So I had full authorization. I didn't have to worry about any copyright strikes using it on YouTube. So I was like, Michael Myers can be skating. And I shoot you know, short films and music videos and documentaries and stuff like that. I shoot at like a very cinematic style. So I said, hey, I have this idea. I can do this production. And they're like, oh, well, I don't know. And I said like, look, like, let me do this production. I'll film everything. I'll do everything on my dime. I'll take care of everything. I'll bring it to you guys. And then if you guys like it, you guys can share it. You guys can post it up on your platforms. I knew they were going to love it. I did this video. I spent 1500 bucks out of my pocket to make this production. They liked it. It went up on Halloween day, 2021. It did really well, extremely well received and got pretty good numbers. To me, I was like trying to show them, like, look what I can do. You can utilize me to do these types of productions and we can get some brand partnerships and we can split some profits and, you know, we can make money together. By this point, I wasn't really making money off the barracks gaming. Nobody at the barracks was really trying to help kind of like stand behind it. They would, the shows would release, but there wasn't like a lot of support from the barracks. Um, the general manager was always awesome and supportive of me, but the people who were supposed to like kind of get brand partnerships and stuff like that, like just things, I don't know, for whatever reason, nobody was really backing the content I was creating. I was like, okay, well this maybe they'll see value in. I killed it and I pitched them an idea about like, Hey, like we could do this for Christmas. And you know, I gave them a whole idea about like, we can get these brands involved and we can make a bunch of money off, you know, this really dope video I have in mind for the Grinch and Santa Claus. None of them helped me. But by this point, I already had the idea and I was like, okay, maybe I got to show them a little bit more of my value. So I say, look, let me just do this video myself. I'll bring it to you guys just like I did for the Halloween one. If you guys like it, great. I'll just take care of it all myself. I guess we won't get any partnerships. Nobody helped me really there. It was a great idea and I really think we could have made a lot of money there. I ended up spending four grand out of my pocket for that video with Gary Jenner and Ricky Glazer. Trying again, show my value to the Bears. Like, look what I can do and I can make us money together if you guys like let me get more involved and be a bigger part of this. Really because I'm a fan of the barracks. Now, at this point, I'm already like really upset with Barra, but I'm like, I'm keeping it professional. Every time I see him, very courteous and respectful. And, but I'm like, look what I could do. Nope, no love. So now early January, 2022 comes. Barra sends me a message. He almost, he would never really ever hit me up. And he says, hey, like, uh, I have this big project that we're going to do. I think you're perfect for it. You know, let's get on a call soon. I want to have you involved. He's, and then Barra being the sweet talker that he is when it comes to getting what he wants, he would try to like really hype you up. Like, yeah, man, like I think this is perfect for you. This is this is the thing I've been waiting for us to get so you can really, you know, you know, make some money and we can do some really big stuff together. 
He's really good at doing that with people where he'll get people excited about something so you get hooked and then when he's done with you, he's done with you. And now at this point, I'm super hesitant about anything Bear has to say, but I'm like, oh, I'll hear him out. He brings up a deal with this company called Caffeine, which is essentially the same thing as Twitch. Literally the exact same type of structure as Twitch. It's a live streaming content, live streaming only, no uploads. And he says, hey, this is super secretive. No one can know, not even anybody at the barracks. Only two people know at this point. He brings me on board to the meetings with the vice president of Caffeine and all the Caffeine team and engineers, et cetera. Now, to summarize really quick about what that deal was like, Caffeine was going to pay the barracks a lot of money. It was a six-figure deal. Caffeine wanted the barracks to do a live show. Now, the structure and the format of how their shows operate and the gear necessary was pretty much exactly the gear I had upstairs in my gaming podcast studio at the barracks. So I was extremely well-versed in how to operate multi-cam live stream shows for with pre-recorded content live and, you know, different types of microphones, et cetera. Like what Caffeine wanted with the barracks, literally, I was the only person at the barracks that knew how to do it. So I ended up being a part of all these meetings and I'm the one who really clearly expressed to Caffeine that I could handle this production level without a problem. Now I'm a part of several of these meetings. I end up having a talk with the general manager at the barracks because I'm like, hey man, I need to know. We need to talk about money up front because all these other things that happened with the podcast and the gaming, things weren't handled properly and I kind of got screwed over. I need to make sure that whatever we're doing here is taken care of. And the general manager said, yes, of course, this is something that's going to bring us a lot of money and we'll make sure you get paid. So I tell them like, look, all this I'm going to charge for building out the studio and I need a team of people that are experienced on these very sophisticated aspects of production that the barracks isn't currently doing. So I have people that work with me already on my stuff that can come and be a part of this. I tell them what my fee would be to operate the shows. And we end up doing this deal with caffeine for 32 shows live streamed. And it's three different shows with 32 in total, not to pat myself on the back too much, but really I was a very important factor to that happening because again, nobody at the barracks knew how to do that. Now the barracks could have hired anybody else who was well-versed in, you know, this type of thing. But again, the barracks having very little money, didn't have anybody they could go to without having to pay them. And the, even at this point, the barracks has like every month, the barracks has been broke by the way. Like I'm not going to get into super details, but yeah, the, the barracks has, always scrambling. I think that's one of the reasons why Bear always ends up screwing people over. I reassure the caffeine team that I can handle this. The deal ends up happening. Again, it's supposed to be private and secretive. I didn't really know why until later I found out why. And I'll get to that in a bit. Now, because I had so many vague aspects with the podcast and gaming with Barra, like everything was confirmed in person most of the time. But all the emails I would send him, there weren't any real back and forths of him confirming a lot of the stuff on gaming and podcasting. So I knew I didn't have a lot of protection there. But on this, with Caffeine's deal, I learned from my mistakes and I said, okay, I'm going to have every single thing in writing, every aspect about what they expect of me, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to get paid. I made sure I wrote down every detail in every email. So anytime I finished having a meeting with Caffeine, I would send an email to the barracks team, Barra, the general manager, et cetera, about all my responsibilities, my the expectations of what I would be doing, what my team would do, everything so I could be protected in case anything went sour. In the beginning, and I have this documented, I clearly outlined that I would not be available 24-7 the way the barracks expects most of its employees to be able to do whatever Barra wants whenever he wants. Being that I had seen the chaos that had already ensued for months, I said, I'm only going to be available for these shows on production days and on occasion phone calls I could have throughout the weeks. But these production days, I'm going to direct the shows and I'm going to run the back end of the software and programming. And I'm going to have my team take care of all the video switching, audio switching, and all the technical aspects. I was very clear about my availability, my responsibilities, and how everything would operate. And I was very clear about what I would require from the rest of the barracks team that was affiliated. Any pre-recorded assets, any content, anything for the live stream shows that is going to be incorporated into the shows, I need it a day in advance. I've had experience in all this production that we're about to do with Caffeine. Nobody else at the barracks had all this experience. So I start being more involved in the beginning about the whole structure of the shows and how things would operate and in the meetings because nobody at the barracks was ever really taking control. 
we would have these meetings with Barra, but he's not very structured and organized. So he would just say a few ideas. Everybody else at the barracks is a yes man and would just agree with anything he said, even if it didn't make sense or if it wouldn't really work in a real world application with a production. And so I would question everything like, okay, well, you know, we need to have, you know, a run of show. We need to have, you know, the exact time frame that this would operate and this and that. And uh, he always would push back, but I'm like, look, man, I'm going to program this whole show and it's going to be a very complicated show. I need to know every aspect of it for me to be able to make a live stream with multicams and pre-recorded assets and video overlays and photo overlays and all these different things. Like, there's a, this is a big undertaking. Nobody else at the barracks really was that prepared for it. I kind of did my best to kind of get it going. We started doing the show. Again, I was very clear about what I needed for the rest of the team for the shows to operate. No exaggeration, almost every single show, the barracks team that was behind everything else, the producer of the show and hit the people that were working with him on creating content and getting things ready for the actual live show, they missed pretty much every single deadline I had explained that I needed for them to provide me with any of the assets. So half the shows could have easily not happened had I not had the experience I've had and was able to work under pressure because they pretty much made it so difficult for me and my team. Me and my team were there on time, every time, never late, always delivered. And when they wouldn't have things ready, we fixed it. Now, the producer of the show, I had a lot of empathy for him because he didn't realize the undertaking that he signed up for. And Barra is a very difficult person to work with. Barra will say one thing and then change his mind last minute. Or he'll say, I will take care of this and not do it. And now other people at the barracks started seeing more of the stuff that I had already been de dealing with with him, but now on this caffeine deal. So Barra ended up making this show very complicated. He would not show up on time. He would change things last minute. Uh, he wasn't prepared. He wouldn't rehearse. Like it was, it was chaos. It was so hectic and frustrating. But me and my team, shout out to Amari and Scott, did an exceptional job. Like we literally like saved the show so many times. I started communicating with the general manager and to let him know, like, hey man, the producer of the show, he's he's having a hard time. He's really frustrated now. The producer of the show would take a lot of his frustrations out on me because he wanted me to be more involved with the show, even though I clearly outlined my availability. And I said, I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to let what's happened to me before happen to me now. So I'm going to do what I do on the times I say I'll do, and then I'm going to kill it. Me and my team will kill it. But besides that, like, nah. Well, he and his team couldn't really keep up what they needed to do. So a lot of times I had to go and try to help out and fix things for them or help point things in the right direction for them because they were falling behind or and it was a, a headache but I felt bad for the producer so I did a lot that I didn't have to do to kind of make sure that what was more important was the show happening at a high level caffeine as a company was super happy with the production which was me and my team a lot of the show started being kind of complicated because the barracks mostly Steve Barrow started changing dates and started pushing things back the 32 shows we were supposed to do with Caffeine were supposed to finish before Battle of the Barracks finals of 2022. Now, me and my team didn't even stay on till then. Not because we didn't want to, but because the Barracks kicked us off. I started seeing little by little that the producer and his friends kind of started edging their way more into what we were doing, me and my team. And then out of nowhere, I got a call saying that they weren't going to have us come back for the remainder of the shows. One week prior, I had got a call saying that the studio where my gaming and podcast studio was, was going to be need to be emptied because they need it for some other deal that they're going to do. At this point, my contract with Hypebeast had finished. Barracks was trying to buy out Hypebeast, get another investor to get rid of Hypebeast. Barra had already been clearly a hater of mine. Even though I sincerely cared about the barracks and always try to bring something valuable to the barracks, content-wise, media-wise, or even the productions that we were doing. From the general manager and the producer that there's some budgetary cuts and they can't afford to have me and my team on for the remainder of the caffeine deal. Even though, again, we were supposed to finish before June. Now, we're at this point, we're in August when I get this call. Because the call came from the general manager who I had a lot of love for as a friend, I didn't push back. And I said, 
All right. It is what it is. Later that night, when after I got the call that we were done, that me and my team were kicked off the shows, I go to the barracks. I already had plans to skate with some friends there. I run into the producer of the show, and he's like, and he like is trying to find something to say, knowing like he like pretty much trying to show like he felt bad for me. Now at this point, I had a lot of support towards him, even though he didn't do a good job as a producer of the show and dropped the ball a lot. I constantly was talking to the general manager about his hard work because I think he, even though didn't do a great job, he worked really hard. He didn't do a great job, really, I think because Barra made his life difficult, which sucks. And so I always had like a lot of support and empathy for him. And I would tell the general manager to be like, hey man, like reach out to him, make sure he's doing good, blah, blah, blah. I was always very supportive of him. He tells me like, hey man, sorry about it. I'm like, I at this point, I'm like, Barra's the one who got rid of me. I'm like, nah, man, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And he goes, the producer of the show, even says like, yeah, man, you know, that call shouldn't even have came from me. I'm sorry, bro. And so I'm like, yeah, yeah, no worries, man. Like, you know, it's Barra's call and, you know, it is what it is. You know, again, I'm trying to be like chill, even though I had just been for a year and a half screwed over by the barracks over and over and over and over again. And now I'm screwed over again and me and my team are screwed over. I'm trying to be chill. I start telling some of my business friends about the situation and they're like, nah, that's not cool. You, if you have, do you have an agreement? I'm like, well, we didn't sign a contract, but I have everything on email. Everything's like solidified. I got messages. I got everything like, you know, explaining that we had a 32 show, you know, plan. And he's like, nah, man, they owe you money. Like, and they, these people have known about all this other stuff that the barracks has been doing to me all these, you know, year and a half. They're like, nah, man, like this is something that you kind of have more of concrete evidence on with, uh, you know, you should be able to make, you know, say, hey, they either got to buy you out. So pay you a certain fee to not come back for the shows or they got to have you and your team continue the shows. And I'm like, you know what? You're right, man. I should stand up for myself because I've kind of just been letting myself get fucked over all these times. So so then I go and I call the guy who oversees the barracks from Hype Beast. I go ask his advice because I want to talk to the general manager of the barracks and I want to make sure I do it in a professional and, you know, a very calm way. I'm not trying to make this a complicated situation, but yeah, I was being treated unfairly. So, you know, like, what can I do? I started explaining this whole process. The guy from Hype Beast, who again over, is majority owner at the time for the barracks, he's like, wait, what? You've been the director of all those shows? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you've been getting paid for those shows? I'm like, yeah. He's like, we didn't know any of that. And at this point, I didn't know that they didn't know. I knew in the beginning it was a secret, but I thought it was because it was going to be like this like cool announcement or whatever. Turns out that Bear had said that Caffeine's association with the Barracks was all free and it was just to build a relationship. So Bear had lied to Hypebeast, the people who owned the Barracks. Now, Hypebeast is entitled to 51% of anything the Barracks makes. So any deal that comes in from the Barracks, they get half of that. Turns out that Bear did the deal with Caffeine and all my checks and all the other checks, now knowing what this guy's telling me, I'm like, oh damn, that's why I got checks that said from Steve Barra, not the barracks. All the invoices I had sent were to the barracks. At this point, I'm like, holy shit, like, my bad. I didn't mean to out the barracks like that. I didn't, like, I wasn't trying to put them on blast to you guys. Now I'm like, damn, like, the if Hypebeast really wanted to, they can go and sue Barra for half of that six-figure deal from Caffeine because Barra lied and that money, and technically, because Hypebeast was still a part of them, Hypebeast is entitled to half that money. But that's not what I was trying to do. I was literally calling to, because I thought everyone was aware that the Barracks was making money on this deal. I'm just trying to get advice on how I can go to make sure that I'm not getting screwed over. Then the guy from Hypebeast graciously still gives me advice on how to approach the general manager from the barracks and gives me good advice. I hit up the general manager and I tell him, hey man, I feel like we've been treated unfairly. You know, I've been treated unfairly before, but with this deal, like, you know, we had an agreement. I've worked really hard on this. I really helped, you know, put this together and and I think it's unfair. You guys are continuing the shows. The caffeine shows didn't stop. Even though supposedly there was no money to pay us, they ended up getting people to take our spots. So somebody was still making money. The barracks was still making money. And even though from the beginning, the barracks had said that our money for, you know, what me and my team was going to make for all those shows was allocated and set to the side, 
now supposedly there was no money for us. It turns out that the people were just trying to get other people in. So they screwed us over. And I tell him, hey, man, like, what can we do about this? Trying to be supportive, but he's like, yeah, man, I don't know. And I'm like, all right, man, well, let's let's talk about it in a, in a day or two. Hey, man, what can we do? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, is it possible for you guys to buy us out or just keep us on for the shows? Like, this sucks. Like, my team, you know, they have all these dates. You know, we've moved around so many times, like, changing dates, and we've accommodated. And, like, my team's expecting to get paid on these dates that we have locked in, and we're not coming back for the shows. Like, that's, that's unfair to them and fair to me. Like, I think we can figure this out. I get on a call with the general manager again. Same thing starts kind of just empathizing with me, pretty much saying, yeah, man, this is unfair. It sucks. Then he starts saying that the producer of the show had been saying, you know, that we were complicated, me and my team, even though we were really the only structured part of the show that was always delivering on time. So apparently I end up finding out that the person who cut me from these shows wasn't even Barra. It was the producer of the show who I had been supportive and going out of my way many times to help him out because he couldn't deliver on his part of the job, but I never put him on blast. I never talked to the general manager about how bad of a job he was doing and his team was doing. I always like, gave him support because I felt bad for him. After all that, he's the one who cut me from the show and it was his decision. By the way, the general manager, awesome dude, but was living in a different state, wasn't even there to see anything. So apparently the producer of the show started saying that I and my team were difficult and things were complicated. So I'm like, wait, what? I... I haven't heard this. Like me and the producer of the show get along pretty well in person. Everything's good. Like, where's this coming from? The general manager knows my work ethic. And I even tell him like, hey man, like, you know that if there's ever any issue, I go and address it, which I did. A couple of times I did have like miscommunication with the producer. The producer had expectations that should he shouldn't have had. And I was like, hey man, like, you know, like let's fix this, let's figure this out. And we got on the same page. So it was all good. And even the general manager said, yeah, I know. I know you're good at communicating. And unfortunately my guys are not. He pretty much says the producer's not even good at communicating. I'm like, well, then how come I haven't heard this? How come no one's even articulated this to me or reached out to me? Like, wh why Why is this now coming up that, you know, is that the reason you guys are trying to get rid of me? Like, I don't get it. I'm like, look, man, I think you guys could either buy us out or something. Like, we gotta, we got to make some kind of deal. I don't think it's fair for me and my team to walk away with no money and being screwed over after literally, like, we were a big part of this show and made it happen. And then this is what the general manager says, which was kind of, it sucked. He's like, Unfortunately, that's just how this business is. You know, I know a lot of people get screwed over in this business, but like, you're going to just give me that? And I told him, look, man, like, I don't want to make this complicated, but I have all the paper trail. I have everything like, you know, some of my my attorney friends like I, that I've kind of just like mentioned this to have, have said like, I, I can pursue this legally if I wanted to. Now the tone starts changing on me and he's like, oh, well, we never signed the contract. And I'm like, well... Yeah, I know we didn't, but, you know, I have a bunch of emails and screenshots and text messages, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, well, I don't know if that's going to hold up in court. And I'm like, yes, it will hold up in court. Like, I know for a fact it will. And he's like, oh, well, I don't know if you're going to want to do that. You know, this industry is kind of small. You know, that's not a good look for you. The guy that's always been super supportive and cool with me. And I'm like, look, man, I told him, I'm not trying to, like, push back on you and make this more difficult for you. I know you have a lot on your plate. And his job is hard, like, dealing with Bear and all that stuff. Like, I know how hard of a job he has and how frustrating it is. And I never wanted to put pressure on him, but I told him, I was like, look, man, like, unfortunately, you're the only go-to guy that I could talk to about this because you're the general manager and Barrow won't talk to me. I'll text him, call him nothing. He doesn't answer. So unfortunately, I have to have this discussion with you. He's like, all right, well, let me think about it. Let's see what we can do. And I was like, look, man, just so you know, like, I know I have legal options, but like, let's try to figure this out. And I'm like, look, man, about the stuff with the producer, like, I've never heard about us having issues before. So like, this is all new to me. Like, I don't understand where this is coming from. I don't know if that's like an excuse, if that's authentic, or if he's just trying to get his buddies in, like to take our spot. So that way, I don't understand. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. I saved his ass like a bunch of times on the show. Like, how how am I the problem, you know? And so he's like, man, maybe you just got to talk to him. I was like, yeah, I'm going to call him. So I call the producer and I tell him everything. I'm like, look, man, I did everything on time. I always delivered. Me and my team have not missed anything. And, you know, we've always delivered. And you guys kind of lagged and dropped the ball sometimes, you know. I'm saying things in a very professional way. I'm just kind of summarizing. But then he ends up also threatening me. I have the full audio recording. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But again, if anybody at the barracks ever says that any of the things I'm saying is a lie, I got all the video recordings, the audio recordings, the screenshots, the text messages, and the emails. Don't want to pull them out and do another video putting all that on blast, but I can and I don't want to. But like in that phone call, which I have the full audio recording of, even the producer says all the things that I said, which I've been saying in this video, 
He's like, I can't say anything against what you're saying, but that was the that was the decision I had to make. We had to cut you. I sent an email to the general manager and I told the producer, I'm, let's let's figure this out. It doesn't need to be complicated. Let's just make this, you know, be professional and be cool. Instead of it being cool and professional, Barra starts running his mouth and starts saying a bunch of lies, trying to taint my image, which is very unfair, very disappointing. And in all honesty, it's, it pisses me off because I've been nothing but professional with the barracks. I've delivered. I've gone, gone above and beyond. I was going to stay quiet and keep this low key. But that's not cool. Like, don't try to ruin my business when I didn't do anything wrong to you guys. I was just asking for us to be taken care of fairly. That's a lot of what the barracks has done to me, most specifically Steve Barra. A lot of people at the barracks have been cool. The general manager, for the most part, up until the end, like that, those last calls kind of sucked. I felt like, you know, he got a little defensive with me in a way he didn't have to be. But even then, I know he has a lot of pressure on him, so I'm not even faulting him for that. Thanksgiving, I still texted him, you know, happy Thanksgiving. But he was cool. The bookkeeper was cool. Chase was cool. And a few other people. But, like, yeah, some people at the barracks were not very cool. And Barra himself was the biggest problem. And just after doing all this to, you know, hype me up, just completely used me and discarded me along with other people. Like, being there as much as I was for the two years, like, I saw him do a lot of shady shady stuff to people and uh you know i'm not here to tell other people's stories so like you know that's not what this video is about but it's just man it's so sad and disappointing you know they say never meet your heroes though this was a prime example of that for me um i really looked up to bear for a long time and i loved the barracks so much when this started happening and bear started saying false things about me i sent bear a text message directly and I, I have all these messages still i have all my emails i had the emails gaming at the barracks.com and podcast at the barracks.com they deleted them right away not knowing that i already had screenshotted and forwarded all my emails so i have all the emails still still have all my text messages still have all my dms when bear started you know running his mouth saying lies about me i texted bear i said hey man i've been trying to keep this professional if you keep spreading lies about me and spreading false information, I have no problem filing a defamation lawsuit against you. Hours later, wrote back, what do you mean? And I never wrote back because I'm not trying to engage back and forth with Bear. I already know how he is with people and it would just be a pointless conversation. But yeah, that's uh, that's the gist of, of how the barracks did me dirty. And uh, again, I didn't want to make this video. It's actually been a few months now, but... Uh, it sucks when I'm trying to do business with certain people and and I have to explain to people because they're hearing things about me that are not true. It's uh it's unfair. It's very unfair. You know, if uh you don't like someone, if you you know, have a disagreement with someone, you can keep it professional, and go your separate ways. There's no need to to spread lies and try to smear someone. So, hopefully after this video, Barra stops saying things about me and and we just go our separate ways.